You're watching episode 152 of Let's Plant. My name is Chuck and in the previous episode we were working on adding some hooks onto these beams. This would allow us to hang some plants underneath the pergola and they would be receiving some shade, care of the shade cloth and they would be able to provide some points of interest on top of the plants. And after doing that, I think the next step here is to figure out how we would do the hanging plants at the back. If you recall, we were thinking of doing a curtain at the very back of this pergola and in order to do a curtain, we would need to create several ledges. That way we could stagger the plants, stack them on top of each other. And if we are going with trailing plants, that would allow us to cover a lot more ground, which means that a few, maybe fewer ledges than otherwise having you know, multiple plants in pots. So yeah. In this episode, we're going to explore our options for creating the succulent curtain, and hopefully we would arrive at a suitable decision. Now before we start, there are two things that we have to consider that would be the upper bound and the lower bound of our succulent curtain. Now for the upper bound, I think it, uh, it would largely depend on the type of hanging baskets that we would end up using here. Because if we have a lot of hanging baskets and they droop too low, then they would be covering the curtain and you know, that would be a waste of space. So yeah. As for the lower bound, we are going to place some pots on the ground, redo our Patreon shrine, and that would dictate how low we could go with our ledges. Now, assuming that our succulent curtain is composed of trailing succulents, then if the ground plants went all the way here, and that means that I should aim for covering until around somewhere here with my pearls or with my whatever trailing plants I end up using. So that's another thing that I have to consider. Before we go further, I would like to give a shout out to my friends over at the Succulent Club in the Philippines. They recently invited me to join their group and I hope you enjoy this video. And going back to the upper bounds, if we have hanging baskets that would go all the way until here or lower depending on how we decide to structure it, then that means that we should probably start the succulent curtain below or around the, the same level where the baskets would end. And I think that's what we should aim for. But before we're able to determine our upper bound, we would need some hanging baskets. And unfortunately, I do not have any spares on me. So this calls for a Bunnings run. We are now back from Bunnings and these are the items that I bought from there. And let me show you what I've got. So first off, let's just put things separately just to give you an idea of how many items I have in here. So as you can see, I bought five pieces of hanging baskets. These are 35 centimeters. I was originally going for 30 centimeters in diameter because I think 30 is just right. But unfortunately, they were out of 30 centimeter hanging baskets, so I went with a 35 instead. Apart from that, I also got this bird bath for wild birds. It is a hanging type as well. As you can see, there's chains here. I was originally hoping to get a bird feeder, but after reading some stuff about Australian wildlife and recommendations, it seems like they are discouraging homeowners from putting up feed for wild birds. You might want to read up yourself but here's some information about it. And instead of feeding them, they recommend putting up water bowls or baths for the birds, especially now that it's summer. So I think this is me doing my part with especially with the ongoing heat waves. I am going to attach this somewhere in this pergola, but currently my plan is to have the beams or the, the hooks underneath the beams to be occupied mostly by hanging baskets such as these. So instead, I purchased a wall bracket which would go something like this. 
and we just affix it somewhere in the pergola and hang the bird bath under it. Hi! Hi. <laughs> For now, I only got five of the baskets because I'm not sure how they would fit. So let's have a look and see what's the maximum capacity with 35 centimeter hanging baskets. So we're going to attach them to the hooks one by one. And it seems like they would not, they would not fit the adjacent hooks. So I have to skip one hook. Remember there are five hooks per beam. So skipping one means that there would be three different hooks that I'll be using. And it looks like going with a three baskets configuration is just enough space. You know, there's a bit of space for them to hang and sway around. As you can see, it's quite windy today. Uh, yeah, I think three per beam is good enough. The other thing I have to check is whether by placing them in the same positions, yeah, they seem to still fit, as you can see. But design-wise, I think it might be better if they stagger them. So instead of being at one, position 1, 3, and 5 for all of these beams, maybe we have 1, 3, 5 for the front, then 2 and 4 on the next set. And repeat the pattern with 1, 3, 5 again, and 2 and 4. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I think this looks better. Looking at them from the front now, I think my decision of staggering them was a good one. Because I think I prefer this look as opposed to just, you know, having them form a straight line like so. Let me just take this one. So this look looks a bit weird to me. So yeah, staggering them, I think that's the way to go. I like it but remember we're here to figure out how we are going to do the back so let's just project these baskets onto the back just to see how much space they would be occupying so it looks like the baskets just go right under the start of the fence which means that if I could maybe start the curtain at fence level that would be great and I would not want them to be too high because you know I won't be able to see the plants or see the top and it would be it would might it might be a bit hard for me to to do some maintenance on whichever solution I go here yeah at least now we know that we have the fence as the guide and if we intend to stagger things well we already have them staggered by position but we could also stagger them by height you know extending the height by using maybe some cord or rope some baskets would be hanging lower, some would be hanging higher. And I think I would like some of the rear baskets to be hanging much lower. That, to, that way there would be a cascade from high to low. You know, again, creating some points of interest. And at least that way, these plants at the back, they would have a bit, some bit of visibility. Because if not, they would be covered by the, the hanging baskets in the front. So yeah, I think that's a good plan. Before we decide on the succulent curtain solution, I think we just have to get this hanging bird bath out of the way. I'll do the drilling now and hang this up. So I'll be back. Maybe this high. Zach, do you think this is high or make higher? Is this good? Yes. Yeah? Okay.
<laughs> now that we have all of the hangers and the bird bath in, we have to measure this whole section at the back. And it is about 1.6 meters, just a bit above 1.6, maybe 1.62. So the popular options right now are two, well the two main options are one, using gutters and number two, creating my own planters. And I was in Bunnings a while ago, I didn't take a clip of it, but I could remember that the gutters were quite expensive, especially since they come in predetermined sizes, predetermined lengths. 162, I think there was a 1.8 meters and a 1.8 meters, 2.4 meters, 2.8 and a 3 meters. So definitely the 1.8 would be fitting that bill. I, I can't remember the price, so we'll have to look it up later. The other option is just to create my own planters using, um, I think one of the top one of the top comments there, or a few comments mentioned using pallets. I think we still have pallets. We used to have quite a few here, but we took them apart because we used them as edging in part of our garden beds. So let's just go have a look. So we have a couple of parts here that we could still use. There's this long one here, which we have already stripped. There's, it used to be part of a larger pallet and a smaller one right here which has thicker wood thicker planks very they're perfect for creating planters now i would need to see how much material we actually have so this long piece of wood here is 2.4 meters and right now i am leaning more towards just reusing this you know because it would be definitely cheaper than purchasing purchasing those gutters but again I haven't really checked the price but free is cheaper than spending on something but another thing to consider is that if I am going with this timber from recycled pallets that means that I would have to seal the, the timber water seal them because they would be constantly wet being out in the rain well technically it is already out in the rain it must have been already treated and sealed before but you know since it is going to be a planter from now on it's going to stay wet longer than it is currently doing right now so yeah a bit of sealing up would be necessary but the more i look at it the more i think that there's not enough of them because there's one two three and four four pieces of the longer planks the rest are quite short i'm not sure how many levels how many tiers i'm going for this might not be enough so I might end up having to do a mix of planters based on this and maybe gutters on some levels hmm. I think another consideration is the rate of growth of these hanging plants so let's say this string of pearls right here these are probably about a year a year old or I don't know as for those string of bananas they are even older but they, there's lots of strands there, so we could probably say that these are two to three years. I think the goal, the goal would be to create ledges far enough that one or two years is enough to cover the whole thing and to finish a curtain. So they have to be fairly close to each other. Let me just grab a measuring tape. Based on the length of the plants that I just measured, 0.4 meters or 400 millimeters, 40 centimeters is just enough for maybe about a year's worth of growth. If I were to divide this, let's say just above the, the fence, somewhere around here, until just around here, maybe I could go even higher, slightly higher, yeah, something like this. I could probably work on three ledges. Yeah, three ledges, 400 millimeters apart. So one would be here, one would be here, and another here. Maybe even four. No, I think the fourth would be too low because that would mean somewhere around here. So let's just shift everything down like so. And the lowest one would be around here. So 
that would mean that with 400 millimeters of growth the first planter would start here and the plants would go all the way until here and the second planter would start around here going all the way down to here third planter starts here going all the way down to here and you could imagine that the lower part the lower pots the pots on the ground are about this high so it overlaps and i think that would be good enough so yeah let's go with this plan so again we've determined that we would need three levels of planters and i am not sure what the cost would look like so rather than just speculating out here let's head over to my computer and crunch the numbers now for this next bit i'm going to show you a prototype i made in minecraft so what you're seeing here is the patreon shrine but with some modifications to the design so underneath all of the beams i created a bunch of hanging pots as you can see here they are currently at the same level but i am thinking of staggering them making some of them a bit longer than the others and right at the back you can you could see a bunch of ledges there's three here they are spaced around 300 to 400 millimeters apart and going down through them are a bunch of trailing plants in my mind this would probably maybe be string of pearls sedum burrito donkey's tail and the like anything that trails really and we might be doing the same for the baskets up at the top so these are all a bunch of hanging baskets and yeah a bit of variety would do best here and here we are at the Bunnings website going by their guttering and spouting section it seems that we have two major options the first one would be plastic guttering and the other would be zinc alum or zinc and aluminum guttering now for the first one with plastic guttering i think this would be the better option for of the two at least for our case because it would be a lot easier working with these you know cutting them down and creating holes but maybe zinc zinc alum might last longer but we'll see i'm also not sure about their prices but my first impression is that plastic might be cheaper so let's have a look yeah so it seems like this is the only option that we have there's a 2.9 meter pvc gutter and what we actually need is 1.6 i wish there was a 3.2 which which we could chop into two or a 1.8 which we could shorten down to 1.6 unfortunately we do not have the size that we want i could swear that i saw one earlier but that might have been the zinc alum so let's have a look at that now so for zinc alum we have the 3.6 which we could chop into two giving us two pieces of 1.8 we also have six meters 2.4 meters so i've had a look at the entire list and it doesn't look like there's a 1.8 on its own but there are a bunch of options here that sells them by the meter and here's one of those so it's 13.05 per meter which works out to around 21 dollars for a 1.6 meter piece and we need three of those so that means a grand total of 63 dollars for the gutters alone that to me sounds like a, an expensive endeavor option two was about looking into using timber we as i shown you earlier we have some pallets that we could reuse but i think those pallets are quite brittle or at least they're too thin and i might need to look for something else that would form the base so here we go i'm thinking that we could get a bunch of dressed pine you know just to serve us just to reinforce us with our pallets maybe the base could be using this if you recall each of the gutter would probably set us back by 21 dollars if we use dressed pine all the way and not reuse any of the timber that means we would need three pieces of these so this is about six dollars 6 12 and 18 just for one just for one of the gutters no one of the one of the ledges 18 dollars that's three dollars cheaper so i guess yeah i guess this is fine so with that i think i am going with 
uh, pine decking and this might even work yeah if we chop this into two 3.6 we get two pieces of 1.8 that means that each one is about three 3.5 less than four yeah just around four dollars per piece this is cheaper than the other one we saw so yeah I'm going with this one now that we've determined our option and worked out the cost I think I'm going to call this an episode please subscribe to my channel if you want to see what we're going to do next in the next episode we might be able to start working on those planters I would be doing a bit of carpentry how about you Zach what are you going to do now are you still going to play or do you want to have a nap you want to play yes okay so we're going to continue playing and i'll see you in the next episode bye